Hey guys, Ben here. Welcome back to the channel. Last video, I talked about the reason why catamaran size has been increasing. So this video, I'm going to do mostly the complete opposite and talk about why catamaran length is really not all that great. Because if there's one thing I think people first overestimate the importance of when shopping for a catamaran, it is length. get started yes I know I need a haircut at this point I'd imagine most of the nation does as well so first problem don't trust the manufacturers I made this mistake in the first part of this series when I mentioned this not a single one of the big three production builders for the first time in history is offering a model under 40 feet the problem with this is that there's always been some rounding when it comes to model numbers Typically, this isn't a big deal. Technically, on the Lagoon 380, the overall length is about 37 feet, 10 inches, 11 inches. You round up a little, it's like, it's not a big deal. However, as was pointed out by a very astute commenter, uh, thank you, Mike, for doing this. With the current generation of production models, this has gotten pretty bad. Um, the, Leopard the Leopard 40 is 39 feet and like four inches, which is not terrible. But the Lagoon 40 and the Fountain Peugeot Lucia are 38 and a half and 38 and four inches respectively. <laughs> Which is, yeah, it's a bit deceptive in my opinion. Keep in mind this is going by length overall. And length overall is always going to be longer than length at the waterline unless you have a fancy inverse bow. So yes, shame on me, but also shame on both of you for not stopping rounding up at the nearest foot. <laughs> Seriously. Second thing is that designers sometimes play tricks when it comes to waterline length. This doesn't happen as much recently, but in the past it was definitely an issue. One example of this being the old South African Island Spirit 37, which is basically just an Island Spirit 35, with some stretching at the stern to get it up to around 37 feet. Major production models typically don't do this since these builders are more well capitalized and don't really mind as much about rolling over their tooling to crank out new models. But one exception to this is the Leopard 39, which is basically just a Leopard 38 with slightly longer sugar scoops and a modified hardtop configuration. Regardless, I will still keep recommending people keep buying them because if you have less than $300,000 for an owner version, it's a bit hard to do better. The worst defender in this category is going to be the now defunct Manta line of catamarans, which started life as the Manta 38, became the Manta 40, and then ended as the 42 Mark II, though the final iteration only has, and I think you've guessed it by now, longer sugar scoops to get up to the magical 42 foot mark. I joke to people that if you think about it, it's kind of like that old medieval torture process where a poor dude gets stretched out on a rack. You just apply it to a boat. Uchimera, on the other hand, recently added three feet at the stern of the 45, but they actually had the decency not to change the model name at all, feeling that the number should reflect the interior space first, rather than just the waterline length. So yes, kudos to you, Uchimera. Kudos to you. This leads us to the third and I think most difficult to grasp problem, especially if you're newer to catamarans, which is that length does not always equal maximum interior usable space. This is a phrase that, you know, if you've ever been on a showing with me or, you know, my colleague Gary Fretz, you've heard us say this phrase because, you know, it's very important if you're living aboard. On a boat, there's just a lot less room for all of your stuff. So, you know, it's, it can be difficult if you're moving from a house to a boat. Here are three big considerations to take into account what determines maximum interior usable space. Number one, how wide are the holes? How high is the freeboard? And most importantly, how full are the bow and stern sections? Lagoon catamarans have very full bow and stern sections. As a result, even on a relatively small model like a Lagoon 400, you still get, you know, something like this nice semi walk around berth, which is typically reserved for a mid sized model like a Lagoon 450. Does the Lagoon 400 sail particularly well? Uh, no. No, it does not, but it does have 
really decent headroom, and pretty good storage. Take any boat on the opposite end of the spectrum to illustrate this in the extreme, you can look at the new Eagle 53. It has a nice open bridge deck design, which I'm naturally a sucker for, but you'll notice that there really isn't any space forward of the mast. You know, there's no space up there for like a spare cabin or even a sail locker. As a result, the maximum interior usable space is probably more similar to something in between a main cat 38 and 50. 41, but I mean if you're gonna actually buy one of these, if you're crazy enough to actually buy one of these to cruise on, I really hope you would realize that. And for those of you wondering, on catamarans with dagger boards, at least on a relatively modern design, the dagger boards themselves don't really take up too much space. At worst, you typically just get slightly smaller heads. The main issue to remember is that on a catamaran with dagger boards, it's gonna be more performance oriented so you're just gonna have narrower holes in general. I wasn't even intending on adding this example to the video, I just happened to come across it and felt that it was too perfect, just because the boats were side by side. But on the one hand, we have a 45 foot semi-custom from a builder which is not particularly well known. And on the other hand, we have the new Lagoon 42. Notice the difference in the bow sections and how one is much fuller than the other. Again, one is 45 feet, whereas one is 42 feet but ask yourself, which is really the bigger boat? Second problem, how is the storage laid out? Leopard 40 is, you know, a nice pocket cruiser on paper, and you know, it still is, but if you have been on a newer charter boat, there are gonna be things about older catamaran layouts that will bother you. For example, on this old Leopard 40, there's no storage underneath the bed. I can't think of a single modern charter catamaran that doesn't do that. Certainly the new 40 does. There's just like certain things here and there that could have been done better and you know have since been done better because you know catamaran designers have squeezed a lot more efficiency out of layouts in recent years. Had a lot of feedback from charter industry, from private owners, and that's really helped them you know optimize the design. So something like a Leopard 40 is really not too far off from really a Leopard 39, which is a much it's a slightly smaller model, but it's also you know younger and it has things that other leopards don't. If you want another example of this, uh, you can look at my colleague Gary Fretz's video he did on the Leopard you know, 57. I'm not trying to pick on Leopard here. There's a Leopard in the background as well. I didn't actually plan that. Uh, this is just where I wanted to shoot. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just the Leopard 47 is another boat I happen to have a corresponding video for. So, you know, go check it out. Um, I know the you know, the videography is a little guerrilla style, but like, just listen to what he has to say. Also, if you're really sick of, you know, videos with, that are just kind of like puff pieces where, you know, we talk about how this old yacht is really well maintained, then I assure you that video is the antidote. Uh, he, he, he doesn't pull punches. See, the boat's squatting in the water, so there's a scum forming, so we have a, a, a nice plant growing in there. We have some varnish lifting up, which to me means water intrusion. And again, I'm not trying to pick on Leopard here. Plenty of brands, large and small, are guilty of you know missing the same optimizations that they missed back in the day. It's just how progress has been. The third consideration is more of a catch-all category, which is basically just, you know, what were the designers thinking? What did they want to do? or you know, what did they have to work with at the time. One thing to note about leopard catamarans in particular is that compared to Lagoon, they've never been particularly generous with their burrs. However, there is a good reason for this. Um, in an article, a leopard executive, Frank Bagul, goes on record as saying that they don't make very big burrs because if they did, it would intrude on cockpit space. So on a leopard, you don't get you know a berth which is as big as a Lagoon, but you do have relatively nicer common areas. But honestly, even that's really just kind of like a minor difference between what are ultimately pretty similar production models. Um, when you get into like older semi-customs and customs, all bets are like seriously off. On a Privilege 37, even though it's just a 37 foot boat, they still give you an entire forward stateroom in the front half under the bridge deck. Uh, on the St. Francis 44, you know, it's a 44 foot boat, but remember, this boat doesn't use sail drives. It has centrally mounted shaft driven engines. So as a result, you know, all of the heads 
and staterooms are in this kind of inverted layout where the heads are at the end and the staterooms are, you know, forward and aft of them. And on like something really obscure like a Sun God 50, uh, you have whatever this is. I really don't know. No, actually, it doesn't really look that bad. The point is, I could go on. There are many fascinating aspects of, you know, catamaran design, but I think those cover the main ones when dealing with size as of right now. Me personally, even though the boats are comparably priced, if I was given the choice between an older, larger boat like a Leopard 47 or a smaller, newer boat like a Leopard 39, I would take the smaller, newer boat. There are a number of reasons for this, but that's just me. You do you, friend. I'm just here to inform. So that wraps up pretty much everything I have to say about size for now. And Lord, help me if I have to make a third video about this topic. You know, there are fly bridges and semi fly bridges on, you know, newer boats like the Lagoon 450F and, you know, the new Fountain Peugeot 45. But I think I'm going to save that for another video. Uh, as always, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, dislike, leave a comment, and do. If you can, please consider subscribing. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.